The Department of Health in Gauteng has reported an increase in the transmission of HIV and sexually transmitted infections in the province. Now, according to the department, a total of 167,109 men were infected with male urethritis syndrome uh, between April and December 2023, which is an increase of 3% compared to 2020. Hi, Sudumelan. Good evening. My name is Tambo Mulukwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we are joined by Maishela Maia, who is the Deputy Director for Voluntary Male Medical Circumcision and Condom Management. And she's here to talk to us about the STIs and STDs following the recent report about the hike and the transmission uh, of those infections. She's joining us in studio this evening. Memaya, much appreciated for coming. Good evening. Good evening, Tavo, and how are you? I'm very well, ma'am. Thanks for asking. I mean, um, uh, you know, before we get into um, these issues, uh, you know, that you've highlighted in the statement as a department, um, obviously, you know, there is an uptake of um, the sexually transmitted infections, you must be concerned as a department. Yes, we are concerned. Uh, so I, 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 I want to talk about, uh, you know, when did you find exactly, um, you know, start seeing this increase? Uh, okay. Was it somewhere last year in the beginning or at the end of the year? No, we saw, we started seeing the increase in our third quarter. Our third quarter start from October, November and December. So when we compiled our third quarter report for October, November and December, that's where we saw that we are having a serious con a problem with the male youth urethritis syndrome, mm -hmm. which is an STI among men. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in regions in Johannesburg region F and then in uh, West Trent and in Ekurule in, in basically in all our district, but sporadic areas. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, obviously, maybe our, our viewers out there want to understand the, dis you know, the distinction between STIs and STDs. Maybe for people that do not really understand what is, uh, uh, you know, the difference between mm -hmm. the two. Yeah, there is a difference. They're mm -hmm. not the same. We're having a sexually transmitted infection. When we talk the sexually transmitted infection is when the bacteria enters the body. And then when the bacteria enters the body, they are going to destroy the cell and then the cell will be damaged. Mm. And then when the cell are damaged, then it means the person is going to present with the symptoms of that infection. Then when the person presents with the symptom, that's when the person, we are saying, the person is having an, a, a disease. Mm. Yes. So the infection is when the bacteria enters the body and damage the cells. And then the disease is when the person is now presenting with the symptoms. Yes. Um, are, are, are STIs curable uh, or, you know, there are others that, you know, you just need to, uh, you know, you just need maybe antibiotics or just certain medications so that you can be able to deal with them? Okay, uh, sexually transmitted infections or other diseases, they are curable. But now the state of them being cured depends on when the disease was identified. Hence, it is very vital that uh, men or people in general need to be screened on time so that they can be detected on time and medication given on time. They are curable but the longer the person may be present with the disease and not seeking medical attention, it is going to take long for that individual to be treated. Mm -hmm. The sooner the disease is identified, the sooner that uh, disease is going to be treated. Mm. Mama, yeah, I mean, reports have also revealed uh, that, uh, you know, there is a rise in STI infections across the province, as you said, in various, I mean, in all the districts, uh, as you alluded to. But a chunk of statistics is, uh, you know, found on pregnant women also. Um, um, you know, how prone is the baby from contracting the, the, the infection? Okay. Yes, uh, our pregnant women also, we, we, we also identified that our pregnant women are presenting with uh, syphilis. Mm. So syphilis is very dangerous. I can say dangerous because now it doesn't only affect the mother. It affects both the mother and the baby. So when the mother is pregnant and the mother is having syphilis and is not screened on time or rather attend antenatal classes on time, so it means that disease is not being treated. It's not, the mother is not getting any medication. And when the mother is not getting any medication, the disease can be 
transmitted from the mother to the baby. Mm -hmm. And then once the disease is transmitted to the baby, there are some complications that can arise. For example, the baby can be born with congenital deformities. Yeah. The baby can be born with uh, blindness. No, I think that, uh, that that's very clear. We, we will uh, touch on that also in the next uh, break. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, we delve deep into, uh, you know, uh, some of uh, the figures that were released by the Department of Health. Let's take a quick short breather. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Malukwani. We are still discussing the transmission of sexually transmitted infections. And joining us now uh, is uh, uh, Maishala Maia, who is the Deputy Director for Voluntary Male Medical Circumcision and Condom Management at the Hauteng Health Department. She's still with me in studio this evening. Maia, um, you know, as, as you said earlier on uh, the surge in the province, I, I, I want us to pinpoint the various areas. I mean, uh, as part of your statement, you've highlighted, as you said, the different districts and stuff. But around the city of Joburg, uh, we saw places uh, such as Alex, uh, you know, um, Santon and, 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 and the Bramfontaine and stuff. Why are the numbers rising in those areas? Okay, thank you, Tabo. The numbers are rising in region E and F, which included the areas that you have just uh, alluded. And then the reason why is because within those areas or those regions, we've got a multiple number of institutions of higher learning. And then that's why our key population, most of our key population are, when I'm talking about the key population, I'm referring to the sex workers and the PUE, to the people who are using drugs. Yeah. So we have got many of them around around that area mm. yes and then now <clears throat> because we've got a, a, quite a number of uh, institutions of high learning that's why we are having our 15 to 49 uh, population of which the 15 to 24 that's our youth and then the challenge is that with our youth we know when they arrive uh, when they are enrolled in a pre I mean, in, in a tertiary institution that's where they are going to have multiple partners they yeah. explore most of them we find that they have got multiple partners and then having multiple partners as well is also a risk and sometimes it's, it's the issue of peer pressure you find that a, a child just enrolled in tertiary and then doesn't have a boyfriend then the peer pressure they'll be saying no why don't you have one yeah. or the issue of peer pressure again is the issue around uh, where maybe they will be telling uh, each other about the three sums I'm sure if you heard about the two sums, the three mm -hmm. sums, and the four sums, then it's a risky behavior as well. And then other issues, they revolve around the economic, uh, economic issues, as in when the child comes here, and then when engaged with other peers, if find that maybe he's not do, she, or he, he is yeah. not doing well, mm -hmm. then he can find herself a sugar mommy or a sugar daddy. Mm -hmm. Hence, the risks are increasing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then around uh, Mirafong, We've got also have uh, mining areas. Yeah. So mining areas, that's where there are a lot of people. And then most of the time they are underground and then they are engaging in uh, several sexual risky behavior, as in maybe anal sex, oral sex without even using a condom. We've got also the farming areas around Bronco Sprite in Swan. Mm -hmm. So in farming areas, you know, that's where people stay there for a long time. They don't go home and then they engage uh, uh, amongst themselves and they can change partners among themselves without even using protection. Mm, this is really concerning indeed. I mean, your report as the department uh, says also there is a significant portion of just over 67,000 uh, that are being treated for MUS, mm -hmm. uh, the male urethritis syndrome, um, the numbers you saw between April and December 2023. Mm -hmm. Maybe let's talk about this infection. What is it? What is MUS okay. and its uh, symptoms, mm -hmm. again, for people that are not thank aware of it? Okay, thank you, Tabo. MUS is an abbreviation. It stands for male urethritis syndrome. A male urethritis syndrome is a sexually transmitted infection which is, caused, which is caused by a bacteria. 
Basically, we've got two bacteria that are causing that MUS. We've got chlamydia and then also having gonorrhea. Yeah. And then what happens is that once a man is exposed to the infection, for an example, if a person is exposed to the infection this week, it might take a week or two, three weeks before the individual present with the symptoms of that disease. Hence, it's very much important that our people are using uh, condoms consistently and correctly every time they have a sexual en encounter or rather intercourse. And mm. then once a person is infected, the symptoms that are going to manifest range between pain and swelling of the testes, and then burning micturition, as in burning when passing urine. And then the person also present with penile discharge. The discharge might be waterish or yellowish. Hence, sometimes they often call it as drop because the, the, the discharge, that is the penile discharge, sometimes they come as in drops and drops. Mm. Yes. I mean, and, Mema, yeah, also um, the MEC has also highlighted a concerning increase in the female uptake uh, of PrEP, uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis, uh, saying that maybe it could be the reason of the high rate of unpro unprotected sex and STI transmission. Um, um, uh, is this a concern? For you that people are now saying that look let's just use prep and then just forget about condoms yeah it's a concern which is like that's why the mc said maybe it's also a concern to us that's why now we want to embark on a research as to why are the people that are, are enrolled on prep are having a STIs mm -hmm. and then we then now that's why we're also intensifying our educational program so that people get to understand that each uh, prevention modality serves its purpose. For mm -hmm. an example, when we talk PrEP, PrEP is going to prevent people from being infected with HIV. Yeah. But it is not going to prevent them from having yes. unwanted pregnancies and STI. Mm -hmm. Hence, it's important that w whenever you are on whatever kind of a preventative strategy, you need to use condom because condoms are our universal uh, prevention mm -hmm. modality because when you use condom you want hiv you want acquire stis you want acquire a uh, pregnancy because i was about to ask i mean you look at how prep has been perceived in various communities i mean even young people are talking about it on social media making jokes about it that look mm. uh, i think the safest way uh, you know i've made a mistake now i need to go to prep mm. and, and and stuff uh, how important is that education as you're saying that we're going to intensify it as a department so that we can be able to educate them that look our universal protection is still condoms mm. prep are just there to you know protect you from not having um to, to, not to contract hiv and stuff but it won't mm. it uh, i think maybe that should be the standpoint that it would not protect you from stis Thank i you. think maybe people do not understand that. yes and then another thing like when you are on PrEP, we know that PrEP, it prevents people from being infected with HIV. But now it depends as to whether you have been adhering to how it needs to be taken. Yeah. Because now when you are on PrEP for the first seven days, you need to strictly either abstain. If you can't abstain, then you must use a condom because that's after seven days when now the PrEP can be able to work to prevent against HIV. So that's why we are saying we are not certain as to whether people are, you are taking the PrEP as it is supposed to be taken or they are not using condoms or is a combination of both. Hence, we're having this rise mm. in infections. Remember, I want us to pocket that we're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, we conclude the conversation looking at, uh, you know, uh, how you're going to make sure that you get the message across to the people of this province. Let's take a quick breather. We're we'll coming back after this. Yeah. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are wrapping up the conversation with the Deputy Director for Voluntary Male Medical Circumcision and Condom Management at the Hauteng Department of Health. Maishela Maia, who's joining us in studio this evening. Maia, um, uh, thanks for staying on. I mean, let's talk about the department's plan of action in combating this issue in moving forward. Obviously, you've raised concerns, you've raised the alarm about this. Um, what happens next? Okay. Next, what is going to happen is that we need to make sure that the community in different aspects of this province get to access the services. 
Hence, now our MEC of Health, Dr. Nko Mora Luhuk, came up with a strategy to say, you must serve with a smile. Because serving with a smile is very, very much important because now, when we are still talking about the, 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 the number of people that are infected, we talked about the youth. And then serving with a smile is important because it, 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 it works against the stigma. Because yeah. most of our, of our young ones or our youth, they are being they, they've been concerned that maybe they are afraid to go to the facilities because when they go to the facilities it's like they will be saying oh already we are jola or they are just uh, they, they just don't have courage like yeah. maybe to go to the garages to buy condoms because they will be saying oh maybe we are jola so now the strategy is that the education is being taken to the community that is what we, there is what we call the teach program the TISH program is whereby the services are being taken to the township, the township, the T1, the informal settlements, and the hostels. Mm -hmm. And then our services, when I talk services, it's a comprehensive package of services. It does not necessarily mean uh, issues around condom STI. So we are taking a comprehensive package of services to the township, informal settlements, hostels, and institution of higher learning. And then each program has got supporting partners. Then our supporting partners, because you can agree with me to say time has fly. It, it is not the same when we yeah. were youth. These days, there is digitals everywhere. So the, 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 the power of social media is there. So we're having our supporting partners for each program. Then they are having different apps. Then for our community to get to understand this, it's important that whenever they visit our facilities, for an example, it be a condom when it's condom then they can check which supporting partner are you using at the clinic then they will tell them because there are many of them so mm -hmm. we are they are using apps so that everybody can be able to access the education i mean remember also um, as government you've tried your best to make condoms available in various areas you see in clubs also there are condoms there but i i, I, I want to know is the public you know, still utilizing this free condom uh, given at local healthcare centers. Do they go to that corner and take or just ask? As you said, that sometimes maybe it's an issue of being afraid uh, to ask for condoms because someone might say something uh, to them there. And also, condom usage seems to be a major problem. I mean, uh, uh, when we were speaking on a sidebar, you said that, look, there's something wrong with uh, how people use condoms these days. Maybe if you can just uh, try to unpack it for us. Okay. The condom usage is very much, very, very much important. I still repeat. But now when we, we talk of condom usage, there are two main important uh, points that we mustn't forget. Condoms need to be used consistently consistently as in uh, you might, in the fact that like maybe if you are having intercourse you can say maybe the first time the first round you say let's use condom in the middle you don't use or you use the condom today to tomorrow you don't use mm -hmm. hence it's important that you use them consistently and correctly so i'm going to unpack the correctly part of it and then one other issue that i want to bring to the public is that the male condoms and the female condoms they serve the same purpose of HIV prevention or STI and unwanted pregnancy because it's like there is a myth that uh, male condoms, maybe they are the ones that are stronger. Mm -hmm. They serve the very same purpose. So what I want to quickly share is that about the correct use of a condom. Condoms need to be stored correctly. For example, maybe let me go through the quick step by step of how to check condoms so that you, and you are sure that the, the condom that you have used, you have used the correct condom and correctly. Condoms have got an expiry date. So every time a person uses a condom, he must check whether the, he or she must check whether the condom has been SABS approved because there is a point, there is a statement that indicates whether the condom is SABS approved. You must check the expiry date of the condom. And again, the way the condom is being opened, there is a technique because some people will use scissors, some will, will use teeth to tear it off. We don't use that to tear off the package. There is a slit, a small slit on the side. Mm -hmm. There is a ragged side. There is a ragged, uh, the condom, on the condom, there is a ragged side. Yeah. Then that's where you're going to tear it off. Tear, yeah. Then before you can even tear it off, you must push it towards the side so that when you tear it, if you have got long nails, you don't break it. 
and then after opening it you take it out the milk condom let me start with the milk condom the milk condom has got a tip on the tip there is a small tip on the part of the milk condom then that tip you must press it so that there is no air that is accumulated on top and then the condom unfortunately need to be put on an erect penis only then after putting on an erect mm. penis it's important that you press the air you put it on an erect penis then after that when the act is done and the male person has ejaculated the the, the, the sperms are going to be accumulated in that pouch no. so if you don't press it before then air is going to fill up that pouch and then during the act when the men ejaculate the semen is going to fill up that pouch and it can burst hence we talk of best condoms yes, then thereafter it need to be rolled properly and be discarded properly like you take it off you get a tissue you roll it out then you wrap it then you discard it then yeah. for let, female condoms yeah. for male condoms yeah yeah now we come to the female condom a female condom the expiry and the other things they are the same and then when you use it the male the female condom has got two parts uh, the upper larger ring and the smaller inner ring the smaller inner ring is very hard and then the smaller inner ring that's why you're going to make a figure of eight and then you can insert it in the vagina and then you don't have to wait for eight hours why because now the female condom it will adjust to the walls of the to the vaginal wall and then you won't even hear the shwaha shwaha during the act and then thereafter you're going to take it out twist it before you take it out you wrap it then you discard it so it's very much important to adhere to those principles because they also uh, take part they also influence whether yeah. the condom has been used correctly or not just lastly before i let you go Mema, yeah, um your programs now you're going to be taking them across different communities and stuff um how important also is this education to also young people particularly the ones that are in high school uh because you know you look at the curriculum uh it's it still remains relevant mm. but there are certain sections that have been omitted uh, now and again um how important is getting that uh, uh education back to these young people so that when they get to institutions of higher learning mm. as you've alluded to the fact that the numbers now are coming from there also how do we make sure that we maintain that program to those young people at different high schools there? Okay. And also, where can people find you if, if, if they want to get in touch with your department? Okay. And then the Department of Health is working collaboratively with the Department of Basic Education. There is what we call integrated school program. Yeah. As in, I think it's last week, our MEC or they were issuing cars so that the integrated school program can be fast-tracked. What we're having is that as a Department of Health, we are having supporting partners, mm -hmm. the non-governmental organization, that are directly or specifically, some of them they are specifically dealing with uh, in-school, we call them the in-school uh, kids. But now because each department has got its own principles, what we are doing is that they will just park, I think, some kilometers away from the schoolyard. That's where they stand there so that when the kids get out of school, then they approach them, then they educate them relevant to their age. Mm. Yeah, so that is what is happening. Very interesting. Um, is there a number or a website whereby people can find you? Okay, we are at 45 Commissioner Street in Johannesburg. 45 Commissioner Street in Johannesburg. Johannesburg is 8th floor. Eighth floor. Yes. Much appreciated, Memaya, for coming. That was very insightful. I mean, uh, now and again, people need to be reminded. I mean, all mm. of us, we need to be reminded of the importance of using condoms and protecting ourselves. Yeah, Much appreciated true. for coming this evening. No, thank you. May my share my share uh, who is the Deputy Director for Voluntary Male Medical Circumcision and Condom uh, Management at the Houting Department of Health, talking to us about the alarming rise in uh, sexually transmitted infections in the province. I mean, members of the public are urged to be cautious against risky sexual behaviors there and also how to uh, protect themselves and use uh, condoms. They're much appreciated. Uh, for that very insightful discussion. Well, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free 
forget to engage with us share any news or stories happening in and around your area just send us an email it's soweto tv soweto today at soweto tv.co.za or you can simply just give us a call or whatsapp us at 081-531-8857 bye to nakitabo and the rest of the team it's good night and thank you for watching Thank you.